Welcome to the Penny Bloom Podcast. Ain't another place that has got more bomb bass. Rump past your mom, dad's listening to Tomcats. Talking everything that make you sad. We don't want that. We're here to make you smile. Put your mind at ease. Peace, love, and bloom. And always praise Keanu Reeves. This what we about. Get some weed in now. We'll talk until we can't no more. And then we peace and out. All right, let's go. Penny Bloom Podcast. It's the Penny Bloom Podcast. Penny Bloom Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome in to the Penny Bloom Podcast. This is Winter is Blooming, our Game of Thrones rewatch podcast. We're on Season 3, Episode 8, titled Second Sun. Benny Off and D.B. Weiss, and directed once again by Michelle Aaron. Director, as we've caught on. Um, sadly, only the second of four episodes that she does. So we don't have much, we don't have much more Michelle McLaren, but she does a good job while she's here. So uh, let's talk about it. I'm Indeed. Colt Robertson. I'm joined by Joseph George. What's up, <laughs> homie? Oh, what up, what up? Always a pleasure to be here. Oh, and it's always a pleasure to have you today. We're talking a pretty solid episode, if I do say so myself. This was, uh, oh, yeah. you know, it's just in keeping with the way this entire season has gone, where it's like, I'm now going like, it's just another episode of Game of Thrones, but another episode of Game of Thrones is like super fucking good. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think just during this rewatch, all the smaller scenes stand out more because we mm. know the bigger things that are coming. So it's now the small things, the small little details that like give me the most satisfaction because Same. I didn't notice them before. And now I'm looking for every little small thing. And right. like, I don't know, in this, I don't know, even this episode in particular, like the main, I think, focal point is like the wedding, Tyrion and, you know, Sansa. It's like the Sam main kind of focal White point. Walker. But yeah, and then like the just little tidbits that you get like surrounding like a- every other character. It's it's really small. Like Arya and the Hound really small, um but really meaningful. Sam and Gilly really small but very meaningful. Like I don't know, it's it's all these little small things that I don't expect to like out of the episode, but then I'm like, ah, this is and this is the reason being some I like of my the favorite show. shit. Yeah. yeah. Mhm. Oh yeah. So and this no, this a... episode's kind of just full of it. Um, yeah, it is. I mean, that's every... all this episode is. It's just so, a bunch mm-hmm. of, except for, and the wedding is like a pretty big scene, but somehow I forgot that this happens. Um, the wedding? Like, yeah, oh, I forgot they... that Sansa and Tyrion actually did get married. Um, mm. As soon as yeah. it was happening, I was like, oh, yeah, because Joffrey's going to take the stool. And, mm-hmm. <laughs> and oh. she, yeah, that was that was hard to watch, but. Let's do this location by location. We've got five of them today, so a little step down from what's usual for us, uh, mostly because we don't go to the Riverlands to see uh, Rob Stark and Talisa, which sucks, given what's happening next episode. We'll see them next episode. Yeah. However, we do start in the Riverlands anyway, with Arya Stark, now captive of uh, the Hound after he kidnapped her from the Brotherhood. What a uh, way to her, yeah. open the episode, episode. two. Like, if we were doing favorite shots, I'm like, damn, okay, it's already the first second of the, the episode. Um, mm. But, yeah, I know, it's just a, the first thing she sees is the rock, you know? We see, like, it's the rock, and then it's her eye. Like, when it focused on her eye, I was like, oh, my God. Like, yeah. damn, the show's just so good. It's good um, looking, man. It is. But, there's a lot of There's a lot uh, of points in this episode where I was just like, God damn, that's a fucking shot right there. But... Mm. Anywho, she picks up the picks up the rock and stands over the hound, planning to strike him in the head. <laughs> and she thinks he's sound asleep, but he opens his eyes and tells her, "You have one chance. Hit me, and you better yeah, kill me. Otherwise, do it hard. <laughs> yes. Otherwise, shit's gonna get bad for you if you don't kill me." <laughs> and uh, yeah, later she sits on the horse with him, sullen and refusing food that he offers her, and. Sandor points out that uh, for all all she hates him, Arya could have been taken captive by someone far worse. And he tells her about how Sansa uh, was saved by him from a group of would-be sexual assaulters. And uh, mm. Arya's like, I don't buy it, you piece of shit, fuck you. And he's like, all right, ask your sister if you ever see her again. She'll tell you. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, But then they arrive at a river, which Arya initially thinks to be the Blackwater. And Sandor goes, where the fuck do you think I'm taking you, man? Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Fuck the king. Fuck the fuck Kingsland. I just love how he talks. He's just like, dude. Fuck the king. Fuck, fuck I don't fuck whatever he king. says. I don't know who he says fuck something else. It was fuck the yeah, king and was, fuck uh, something else, but uh maybe it was just King's Landing, I don't fuck know. Fuck the city. Um, yeah, something like that. But man, it's just Fuck the he's... kingdom <laughs> and fuck the king. Yeah. You yeah, haven't no. met my brother. You know, if you think I'm bad or whatever you know, yeah. whatever. Like uh man, it's just their their journey's just so good and I don't know, the hound is you know, still a bad guy. He's done some bad stuff, but but he's right. He's like comparatively to some other people we got, you know, even in, in his own family there. He's not well, the worst out of all of them. I can't imagine Arya's relief whenever he's like, I'm taking you to the fucking twins. Your mom yeah. and brother will be there soon. And that's where I plan on taking you. She's probably like, oh, shit. Last I saw you were a fucking lackey for the the king and the Lannisters. I don't I don't understand what happened, but uh I really appreciate just the arc they're about to go on is, mm. is so fucking good. Um, but mm-hmm. uh, anyway, uh, oh, you're okay. Arya is, uh, yeah, she's quite relieved to see that they're going back to the twins, not to, not to King's Landing, but, you know, not so excited that he's going to ransom her. But like, you know, what, what to. Yeah, fair enough. Man's got to yeah, get I mean, his, like the game's you know, the game's the game. If you got to play if the, the game. brotherhood, you know, they got to get their gold one way or the other. They need it for the army, you know, click Sandor Clegane. He's, you know, or he's got, he's got to make his own way. He's got to eat. He's got to, you yeah. know, he's, he's no longer in King's land. He doesn't have all the, all the stuff he once had. He's on his own. Um, right. It, you know, makes sense, but he's doing it. He's doing it out of good, out of good faith. You know, actually, it's to get her back with her family and to fuck the king and everyone back yeah, at King's yeah. Landing. So, yeah, yeah. so I'd, I'd say he 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 deserves some gold gold for that. I think so too. Uh, I think so too. But uh, yeah, nice and quick there in the Riverlands, mm-hmm. and we are on to Yunkai after that, uh, where Daenerys, Jorah, and Barristan hide behind a ruined building to spy on the encampment of the Second Sons, mm-hmm. a uh, a mercenary company, the power the powerful friends that the Yunkish have employed. And Barristan explains that although there are only 2,000 of them, they are armored, mounted, and they're enough to cause trouble for the Unsullied. And Daenerys tells Barristan to organize a meeting with the Second Son's captain, saying that the men who fight for gold can't afford to lose to a girl. Mm. But yeah, uh, shortly... Oh, I don't know, there was, like, little imagery there. Whenever she was kind of looking down at this, like, at Young Kai, you had, like, mm. Sir Barristan on one shoulder, and then you had uh, Jorah, on Jorah the you know, on the other, and, like... Yeah, you can't trust these people who fight for gold. No honor, whatever. And then Jorah's like, well, if you pay them enough, you can trust that they'll they'll kill whoever you pay them to, you know, like mm-hmm. sort of thing. And it's I love just the back and forth that they that they always have. And, well, and it's it's uh, a cool contrast between Barristan and Jorah because they are both honorable to a degree. Mm-hmm. But Jorah has is noted to have been one to bend the rules if you need to. Mm-hmm. He's like. Whenever he was selling people, it's because he his land was dying and he had no means to uh, make the crop grow again unless he had some fucking money. So, like, he was like, I'll do what I have to. And that's kind of Jorah's I'll do what I have to. Barristan's like, do what you can mm. within reason, you know. So there's like a cool little balance for the people advising Daenerys. But, uh, yeah, Daenerys then hosts the captains. Of the second sons, uh, Miro, uh, Bravosi. Fuck that guy. I think yeah, that's he's the, main the worst. One, right? Fuck that's that guy. All, that's yeah. an all-time <laughs> piece of shit. Um, and this, he's a Bravosi known as the Titans bastard. Oh God, yeah. I mean, usually bastards are, you know, like John. We they're like the unsung hero that you know you, you want to root for. But oh, man, Ramsey. this one's just ah, true. Never mind. Look, I'll take that back. Um, but yeah, this dude was just all like. They got you to hate him very quickly, and it's, mm. you know he's just a pig. He's just a yeah. giant fucking pig, and he's disgusting. He's just a, one of the worst, like genuinely one of the worst people in this show, which is astonishing yeah. considering how many terrible people there are in the show. And I think uh, the purpose of it is just to show how Daenerys can keep her cool. Like I mm. think it, you you put any other leader, any other person that's going for the throne right now in that they same situation. Him. Instantly, they're dead. Yeah, no question. Joffrey? Oh, my God. Like, it, 
it, like the dude couldn't even get three words out before that you know was dead i think stannis even killed you know like oh, even yeah. actually killed like everyone else kills this person yeah it just shows Daenerys how much like, more savvy and yeah. uh strategic she is yeah. she's like i need to... this army you know mm -hmm. i don't want to kill all of them let me just let them think that they're walking all over me let let me give them a barrel of wine to give you know get them all just drunk as fuck so they can't fight you know like mm -hmm. she's like i don't know she's very smart and just just keeping her cool you know like she she knows that like she could kill all of them. All of them, yeah. If she wanted, you know, she's like, I have this power, but I I'm going to keep my cool. You know, I'll let you talk to me like this. Mm. Um, but. Yeah, man, it's bad, know. too. But, uh, yeah. Miro is not the only one there. There's also Prendal Nagejan, a uh, Giscari, and also in attendance is Prendal's capable and striking lieutenant, Dario Naharis. Valar Morghulis. Is, yeah. is this another connection to, like, I don't know. Because uh, th th he he stays with Daenerys for a little bit, right? There's an actor change though with Darla, yeah. Right? He's with Daenerys until she leaves for Westeros. So no chance this is Jack and Hagar because no, yeah, no, no. There's no uh, way. Valar Morghulis is also just a very common Bravosi yeah. saying. I was and just he... this dude's just very cryptic and mm. it's just interesting and Jack and like. You know, I could see this just being another like he he's Serio and then he went to you know to Jack and then now he's he's over here just because Dario fucks. I mean, we 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 talked about Podrick like laying pipe and everything like that, but but Dario only fucks girls that want to be fucked. You know, yeah. And Dario like, has game oh, in dude. a way that Podrick simply doesn't. You know, yeah. like uh, Podrick just has the natural talent that I, yeah. he doesn't even know how he does it either. It just kind of came naturally to him. But Dario, Dario knows how he does it. Yeah, Dario. Whenever he was like, listen to my voice, follow my voice. And then she like followed him and like sat in his lap. He was like, yeah, that's right. What's up? I was like, that was, I, this dude, I wish I was him. I wish oh I was my that God. guy. They, they showed uh, polar opposites. Uh, the worst man pig ever. I don't mm. even remember his name. Just man Miro. pig. Yeah. Fuck him. And then they just showed the absolute just Riz God <laughs> in Game of Thrones. You know, like this dude just has game out well, the ass. And that's why I'm like, I want to know what happened behind the scenes because the guy who does get recast in the role of Dario Naharis is fine as Dario Naharis. He's a great actor. He's in a lot of stuff mm -hmm. that I've really enjoyed him in. Uh, he is not this guy though. No, this, dude this guy like... plays Dario Naharis yeah. so fucking perfectly, man. Um, and like looked like he just came out of Lord of the Rings, you know, like, yeah, perfect, no, like he like looks... perfect fit in the fantasy world for Game mm -hmm. of Thrones and yeah. like, his cadence, the way he spoke, like I don't know, it was it was Dario really Naharis. Um, but yeah, he's yeah, he's no. getting the character. Oh no episode. doubt, um, no doubt. Because damn, is that dude just cool, calm, yeah, this... collected, and we haven't even gotten to really why I guess you know. But I'll just I'll say. Um, oh no, yeah, he's, he's already getting it as well. Um, yeah, so yeah, he's badass. Yeah. Um, he's a badass for sure. Uh, this one is portrayed by Ed Scrine, uh, and yeah. then he is replaced by Michael Huisman. Who uh, is really enjoy him, and he's at, he's not bad in the role of Dario Naharis. Mm -hmm. He just had some big yeah. shoes to fill in the three episodes that Ed Scrines in, which is kind of hilarious. <laughs> um, but yeah, I lo love me some Dario, and he was also my favorite character. And we will eventually get to why. But uh, the uh, vulgar Miro makes himself at home. States that Daenerys reminds him of a whore he once fucked in lease, and that she licked his asshole in a way that he'll never forget. Um, and uh, Miro refuses Daenerys's offer of alliance with her larger army, pointing out that they will not get the rewards until she claims the Iron Throne, uh, which is still a distant prospect. And with the aplomb, she replies that a fortnight previous, she had no army and a year before she had no dragons. That was a line right there. That was a bar. That almost the line of the episode. Um, mm. But there's I don't know. we'll get to that. But man, Daenerys was laying down the law here. Yeah. Um, she, she was cold with it. Yeah. She was. But uh, smiling gently, she gives them two days to make a decision and sends them off with a barrel of wine that Miro had demanded. And Dar Dario smiles back over his shoulder as they depart. And once the cell swords are gone, Daenerys drops her uh, pretense of cordiality. And while glowering at Miro, instructs Barristan that if it comes to battle, kill him first. And Barristan yeah. says he would be glad to do so. Hello? Uh, Interesting that she goes to Barristan. I think it's just... 
he's the better sword. Like he's the greatest sword just, in Westeros. Yeah, it's like, like, like no, no, like disrespect to Jorah there. You know, because no. Jorah's also right there. It's just like Sir Barrison is just that dude. You know, it's like kill that guy, please. Like if you need anyone dead, you go to Sir Barristan. Makes sense, mm. you know. Uh, but I kind of felt a little bad for Jorah there. You know, it could have could have been like Barristan Jorah. If it come, you know, it could have been yeah. both of them, you know, but it's right. just like, all right, Barristan. Well, I think there's it. something important about that in terms of the way that she views Jorah in comparison to Barristan. Um, like there's there's this stuff later on in the show about how before he dips because he gets found out to have been a spy once upon a time. She, if that never happened, he would have been her hand. Mm. You know, like, uh, yeah. he wouldn't have been captain of her armies. He wouldn't have been commander. He would have been the hand of the queen. That's like, true. that. there's a different element to Jorah than there is Barristan. She's comfortable just going, Barristan, you go off into battle and fight my wars. Jorah, I need you by my side, ah, which is uh, which is okay. an odd, like, uh, odd thing for a warrior like Jorah, since he is a knight and very, very well established mm. to uh, be fucking cold with it. But, uh, Nevertheless, at the mercenary camp, Miro is fondling a a Yunkish uh, sl- uh, sex slave uh, while discussing the uh, situation with Prendal and Dario. And Prendal admits that the Second Sons cannot defeat Daenerys's Unsullied. They're like, yeah, we have no fucking chance against them. <laughs> uh, but Miro's like, okay, what if we assassinate her? One of us goes in there and we just take her out, and that's that. Uh, and Miro gives uh, the woman three coins, one from Volantis. One from Marine and one from Bravos. Way to do this, by yeah. the way. Yeah. And like, at first, I thought it was like, um, they were trying to say that each of these three coins represented like where these three came from. Like they were all mercenaries, so like they all probably had just different backgrounds. And I'm like, okay, so this guy's from Bra. Like she was just gonna pick one coin out of the bag, you know, blindly, and then that was gonna be the person that went to it. But like. I don't know, it didn't even, like, spin her around. It was just like, all right, give these coins to anyone, you know. And, like, the Bravosian coin, that's the person who does it. And mm. it's the the square coin, the yeah. most, you you know what fucking coin? You, I don't know. I, I, anyway, um, it's a TV show, and I don't, you know. <laughs> but I, I just thought it was hilarious that, like, that this is the way they decided to go about, like, who's going to assassinate Daenerys Targaryen, you know, like, right. the mother of dragons, and this is how they go about it. I just, um, you know, I think it's a little fair to bring up that, you know, it's not just, like, a little side bet that they're they're doing here. This is, like, a very important move that they are making to assassinate someone, and this is, I don't know, I think it's just, you don't get this anywhere else. Um, but, but yeah. Um, we get, we get our our boy uh, Dara. You know, this is I don't how know, we I love get... him, man. And there was a line here that I almost went with. Uh, there are two. There are two things that God gives us: the the thrill of fucking a woman who wants to be fucked, and the thrill of killing a man who wants to kill you. And smooth, uh, smooth every stuff. like just poetry, a, just a bar. This like, dude is yeah speaking an, incre- an incredible, uh, just personality for a character in this fantastical setting you know what i'm saying like uh yeah yeah i'm just i'm not i'm not a fighter i'm not one to fight but like if i was in this time i would hope to be like a dario oh you know a guy that just could fight anyone and have confidence in that and then just also fuck yeah just just and like just be known for that that like yeah, yeah like i would this this is like i don't know i i would I equate him to like Danny Phantom. Like my childhood <laughs> crush for Danny Phantom is like kind of the equivalent. My adult crush now is Dario Naharis. Um, mm. Yeah. No, I fully but, understand. I fully understand. Specifically at Scrine's Dario Naharis because like yeah. this guy's a different breed in terms of the uh, je ne sais quoi that he's, yeah. pre- that he's pre- uh, hmm. bringing to the role. But uh, regardless, that night, as Daenerys bathes, she is surprised to learn that Masande speaks no fewer than 19 languages. And Masande says this shouldn't be that odd, since it only took Daenerys a year to gain a reasonable grasp of Dothraki. And the Khaleesi is a little, a little bothered at the idea that she only has a reasonable grasp on Dothraki. And uh, she she switches to the Dothraki tongue and uh, 
very quickly, Masande corrects one of her pronunciations and she's like, ah, okay. Okay. I oh, see. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> but then uh, suddenly an, un- an unsullied enters and holds a knife to Masande's throat. Uh, is wearing the, the armor of an unsullied, which sucks for whatever unsullied Dario inevitably had to kill to get this arm, this armor off of, um, which they don't spend a lot of time stressing about, which is hilarious. Um, but, uh, he removes his helmet, revealing himself to be Dario, and he explains that he is here to kill Daenerys on the orders from his captains. And they ran into a, you know, philosophical disagreement over her beauty. And uh, he then produces their severed heads, intrigued. Mm-hmm. Daenerys rises from her bath and asks Dario if he will swear fealty to her. He bends the knee and swears his sword, his men, and his heart to Daenerys. Man, I wanted to see Man Pig just get killed on screen, you know, but I think well, it's better that Daenerys. Yeah, it's like he wasn't even a challenge. Yeah, it wasn't. No. It wasn't worth showing us. Yeah, Dario's yeah. just like that. Yeah, I bet. I bet they were just drunk, and he just waited. You know, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't even think it was a fight. You know, I think mm-hmm. it was just like. Oh, really? That's how you want to go about it? Okay. They, like, I guess, no, he said they drew their sword, and then he drew yeah. his. Oh, yeah, the way he um, explains the way the story went down. Would have been a cool fight scene. But regardless, uh, this is this scene is where I got my line from, because I loved, uh, hmm. I just love Dario Naharis. Um, it's also where I got my character for Dario, but uh, yeah. whenever she's like, you are a confusing man, and he's uh. like, I'm the simplest man you will ever meet. I only do what I want to do. It's like, fuck yeah, you do. Love that. How do, how do you not, like, yeah, she, I don't know. She's like, okay. I'll... She's also immediately intrigued, you yeah, know, you're by in. the prospect. Yep. You're in. She's like, yep. Yep. I don't know. And she's, I don't know. You gotta, you gotta also think. She's also young and, you know, I guess she, she was loyal to Khal Drogo, but she's, she's looking for some other people. And Jorah, Jorah's just not it right now. You know, a little old. Jorah's a bit just, too old. A bit too old. Barristan, definitely even older. You know, that, that's not even it. This guy, I mean, come on. How could you not want him to be by your side? Um, so, yeah, I mean, and he it made a pretty pretty good case. He's like, well, they wanted hmm. to kill you. I killed them. And here's their heads. Um, I'll fight for you. And I now swear to you. And you know, and he also at the very end there, he also throws in, "And my heart is yours too." You know, he 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 swears to her, but then he's also like, "Let me let me throw in, you know, let me let me end it with that." Well, that's the thing is that like Miro was making fun of him for being like a man slut, but mm-hmm. he does fall in love with Daenerys. Like, again, whenever she, you know? whenever she yeah. decides to go back to Westeros, what she tells him is that. It's just a bad look to have him at her side because he was the leader of the Second Sons. He holds no weight over in Westeros. You can't be my king. You know? Um, Dang. They, they were, like, fully blown going, like, yeah, for seasons yeah. three, four, five, and six. Wait, what? Yeah. That's actually... And they were Burn. on the whole time? Like, just kind Well, of- uh, they're... There's the fact that she has that arranged marriage with the dude in wherever the next city, Astapor. Is that the next one, or have they already been there? Marine? Marine. That, that's it. The pyramid? Um, the pyramid yeah. one? Marine. I think that's Because she marries uh, the guy there. That's who she arranges the marriage with. Is Who's the guy there? I'm trying to think. He's not of note in any real way because he doesn't last very long as yeah. her uh, betrothed. But uh, regardless, like, so they're on in the background, essentially. It's not it's not the forefront mm-hmm. for a long time. But, uh, you know, he's the one who gives her relief after a stressful day. Um, ah. yeah. You know, she returns to her chambers and she's like, send Dario up. Need some <laughs> need some loving tonight. Mm. OK, that's uh, I mean, I, I was kind of coming in being like, how how could this in any way be Jack and Hagar? You know, or I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it is a faceless man. You know, the act the actor change isn't actually such. Oh, there you go. An actor change. Uh, no, I'm I'm, I'm kidding. It, Everyone that, in the that's show's not, like, dude. You all of a sudden look very differently. Daenerys would then be like, "Yo, how did you look way different?" You know, if if that was actually true. So obviously it's it's not. Um, 
but yeah, no way that's true. Now, now knowing that he actually does last that long through season, yeah, six. Yeah, um, I, did, he I didn't is actually yeah, actively really. at Daenerys' side <laughs> while Jacken is well, training Arya. Hey, Jacken's like that. Okay, I don't want to yeah. put it past him that he can't just teleport. Um, hey, it's um, all Essos, you know. It's not sure. like it's across the narrow sea or anything. Hey, uh, could be. Who knows? Maybe they got some crazy transportation in the. The uh, the faceless men, you know, yeah. that, that's also one of their secrets is they can that's just some, that's what they go they into got mines. It on them like that. They warg. That's their actual secret. It's they don't actually just take the faces. They, that's like their entry level shit. But then when you graduate and you're like Jackin's level, mm. you actually warg into another person so well that you just take over their body. That they just have dead bodies everywhere. And that's you know instead of the face satchel that Arya carries around, the graduated they just have dead bodies everywhere in yeah. Essos and Westeros that they, they can just warg put. right into them, wake up, and do their thing. I don't know. But uh, now I'm getting too deep into it. Like um, it's Doctor but... Strange in the Multiverse of Madness <laughs> or some shit. But, uh... Yeah. No. Uh, nevertheless, please. we were then in Dragonstone, location three of five. Uh, Melisandre finally arrives back at Dragonstone with Gendry Baratheon in tow. And Stannis is... Uh, less than impressed by the sight of the bastard boy who is technically his nephew and is bemused when Melisandre orders him fed, bathed, and clothed. He believes it is pointless, as they intend to sacrifice him, but uh, Melisandre reveals that it is merely a sham to keep Gendry feeling secure in much the same way as keeping a sacrificial lamb from seeing the blade of the knife. I think, I think Stannis also kind of made a revelation here, too. Like, is he a sheep that's being kind of... Um, right. or a, a lamb that's being, you know, brought to the slaughter without yeah. knowing. Um, and I don't know. I, I think right now, I think I, I don't know how how much Melisandre knows. I think she tr- she truly believes Stannis is the way oh, I think so, right too. now. Uh, so I don't think like she's actively planning to kill him or you know anything right now. But uh, it is interesting just how she speaks and like she she could play it that way. She's like, well, you know. I don't know, just the way she talks, she's always so vague and mysterious. Um, hmm. But, I don't know. I love uh, the, like, this scene. I don't know if it's, I don't think it is my favorite scene. I don't know, I was debating. Um, whenever Davos comes up here. Um, yeah, when Davos is down in the cells trying to learn how to read and is paid a visit by uh, Stannis. It's short but sweet. Um, you know, not, not that long uh, at all, but the conversation they have here is pretty good. I, I might wait on it. I might be like a, like a, a maybe on the scene right here. Um, I love, I love this I, scene, you know, I yeah. think, well, I'm also just really impartial to Davos in general. I love me some Davos. Oh. So like, uh, this scene where, you know, Davos is like, so you came down here to tell me about this. Mm. You know why you did that, right? Mm-hmm. You want me to say you shouldn't do yeah. that. That's exactly. Yeah, you know why you're down reason. here. Yeah. yeah. You know you're a good man. You don't do this. You know you. You don't. Um. Th- I think. And this is another thing I'm debating. I think I do want to give it to him. I thought I thought there was a clear winner in the performance. Um. Just because of how the range he had to establish here, but I think I've given him his flowers enough. I think I'm going to give it to Liam Cunningham this mm. episode for Davos. Like he actually had to like fake read. You know, not know how to read. Uh, yeah, right. Like, Vicent, yeah, r- r-. you know, like I don't know. That's just kind of hard. But then, like when he's actually like talking to Stannis here and actually like telling him, like telling him how it is, and he's like, "I know who you are. You're not this." And like even when he's like, "Um, my son, when he was five years old, when he asked me, you know, if if he was gonna die, I wanted so badly to tell him no, you know. But I think the gods are just stories we made up to." have our children sleep at night mm-hmm. or something like that. I'm like, oh my God, this dude is like spitting right now. And then Stannis just comes back and he's like, but her God is real. You know, like the, I've seen the things I see, you know, when you see the things well, that you he even sees, saw, uh, it, he saw a know? vision of a great battle yeah. in the snow. Yeah. Which is. Oh, the battle of Winterfell. Yeah. In the he, last he season. saw it. Yeah. He saw it. And I don't know. It's they're both like kind of right here, you know, like, Davos, just from the human perspective, from, like, the ethical perspective, you know, you go with Davos here, um, just because it's like, yeah, this, this, 
he's innocent. You know, this, this dude has done nothing. He's only, you know, Gendry has just been passed around his whole life. Like he doesn't know anything of this and he's just completely innocent. He's done nothing to you. There's no reason to sacrifice him or, you know, kill him. Is he, he Davos even says like, they're the same thing. Sacrifice and kill. There, there's no difference. You know, you're just killing right. this, this kid. Um, but then Stannis is like, when you've seen the things I've seen, you know, what, what's the price of, of one bastard boy on the, on, on the hand of a kingdom, you know, but this is just a prophecy and like, a, mm. you know, it's like the reality is that you're killing a boy. You don't yeah. know for sure that killing him will actually lead to these things, you know, sort no. of thing, but it's, it's a, it's all a hunch. Yeah. And even then he doesn't have any way of knowing for sure at all. It's Melisandre who would have the, the idea of what would actually happen. He's operating on faith and a mm. faith that he doesn't even really believe in. Yeah. You know, but it's, he just, he just acknowledges he does, yeah. that like he's seen evidence. So yeah, it's he like, doesn't want to believe it, but he's like, I've seen things that I can't ignore. You know, he's mm. like, and, and even Davos when he, I mean, he saw whatever the fuck Melisandre gave birth to. Um, and he's like, he kind of, he's like, you know what? You're right. Like, actually, I'll, I'll see out this demonstration. You know, Davos is, he's actually kind of like, you know what? Sure. If you're going to show me evidence, I'll actually, I'll see this out because the Lord of Light is seeming pretty fucking real. Um, and that's what we've been saying on this rewatch is like, if we're, you know, on the God, you know, thinking of what gods are real and not, like, there's one for sure that we, you know, if they're all the same, whatever, but one that is actively doing things in the show is the Lord of Light or whatever it wants to call itself. Um, yeah, no yeah. doubt. Uh, I don't know. I'm Liam you. Cunningham here. I, 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 I like him. Uh, so I, I, I think I'll, I'll give him, I think that's his first performance nod. I think um, it might be. I know I get, I think I gave him a character. I think no, yeah. I gave him one of the season premiere. A performance? A performance. Okay. So he's gotten flowers before, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I like I really like this scene. Um, but I don't think I can I think I'll pick a different scene, actually. I just really liked his performance out of it, and that's what I wanted to, mm. to highlight. Um Yeah, no, I'm I'm confident with my scene. I, I, I what's funny is this episode did so many great things on so many fronts. The only thing that I wasn't sure about was my quote. Mm. But like character, performance, and scene, I knew pretty much immediately. Um, I was I was on board, but uh, regardless, in Gendry's quarters hereafter, M- Melisandre seduces Gendry long enough to distract him and tying him to the bed, and places leeches on his body. Uh, and she explains as Stannis and Davos enter the room that Davos wanted a demonstration of the power in King's blood, and then removes the leeches and lights a fire in a nearby brazier. And as part of the magical ritual that follows, Stannis throws the leeches into the flames at Melisandre's direction and recites the names of the people he wants dead as they burn. The Usurper Rob Stark, dead next episode. The Usurper Balon Greyjoy, dead next season. The Usurper Joffrey Baratheon, dead within four episodes. Um, Pretty foolproof, if you ask me. Um, I mean, these people are in the path of dying very likely you know the, these people are more likely to die than just other people in the world um they are at war they are trying to go for the throne you know trying to make plays and stuff like that um but like the fact the first name that he drops is rob stark you know it, it would be interesting if it went rob stark joffrey then right. you know if it went in order that'd be kind of nuts um but I don't think that matters, you know. I don't. I don't looking into that. But um, I don't know. Kind of seems that the red wedding was already going to happen, no matter what. Rob was already dead, you know. Right. Think, right. You know. No, Rob... that's that's the thing. Is that like, mm-hmm. yeah, it's circumstantial, mm-hmm. but there is also the fact that all these people are murdered. They don't die of natural causes. Rob is murdered. Joffrey is murdered. Balon is murdered. They are all murdered, which is like, uh-huh. it's not like the Lord of light just struck them down at where they stand. There were, there were things that happened mm-hmm. to make that happen. Balon is the most, Balon's is the most bizarre one where Euron Greyjoy returns from the woodwork out of nowhere and just tosses him off a bridge. And that's that. That's true. You know? That is what happens. Oh man, yeah that that 
fuck. I no way I'd walk on that bridge ever. If like that's oh, the no. only way to fuck get from no. that castle. I I go all the way down or whatever you got to yeah, do. I'll walk around. up the stairs. You know yeah. I don't care. No, but, but yeah, it is. It was hilarious <laughs> hearing the usurper Baylon Greyjoy. I was like, I forgot he was even a part of this. You know. Yeah. When I, yeah, hearing the names, I'm like, okay, Rob Stark. Yep. And I'm like, okay, Joffrey's probably in here. And I'm like, Baylon usurper, Greyjoy. I'm like, Baylon I I'd, I'd kind of think. I had to think a little bit. I'm like, wait a minute, who's Baylon? I'm like, that's not. The, I'm like not the, the and I'm like Theon no and I'm like oh wait no it's just his dad yeah that's that's his dad and I'm like that's who that is so like yeah I, I don't know it took me a little bit to just even remember who Balon was right um so but yeah I don't know very very interesting here you know uh and in the dem- <laughs> interesting that this was the demonstration that they showed Davos um because he was looking for evidence for the Lord of Light and this is like something that would take just time to, for unfold. it you know to happen. And I guess Rob's pretty quick. I don't know. He'd probably hear the news and be like, okay, actually, okay. let's hold on here. I'll maybe wait it out. Um, so I guess there is some. Yeah, they're all dead within a year, you know? Like, that's. <laughs> True. Um, that's dang. not nothing, you know? But uh, regardless, that leads us to our four out of, fourth out of five locations here in King's Landing. This is where we will get both my performance and my scene. Mm. But. Uh, at King's Landing, Tyrion speaks with Sansa before the wedding at the Great Sept of Baelor. Though he knows the girl is not thrilled at the prospect of marrying him, Tyrion promises Sansa that he will not mistreat her. And Sansa agrees that there are worse Lannisters she could be wed to. That whole scene was adorable. I was very close to going with that one mm. simply because when the scene kicks off and Sansa is still doing her whole, like, yes, of course, I will serve you, and da 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 And he's like, you don't have to do that. Stop. Like, that's... Yeah, just stop. Yeah. But then, like, even trying to comfort her, it's, he's like, I just, I don't know what, I know how you feel. And then she's like, I know you don't. And he's like, ah, you're right. He's like, fuck. He's like, damn. I probably I don't know. don't. He's like, but yeah, I certainly I feel a certain yeah. type of way as well, you know? Yeah. Like, uh... yeah, it's, they're both, yeah, I don't know. It was, um... Both in their own kind of prison, you know, and that's mm. what he what I he suppose says. that is a different kind of prison. Um, yeah, he uh. he handles this so well, the everything, and even even how how drunk he gets, he knows like who he is, like and the decisions that he's making, you know, like he uh. he never lets his drunkenness get in the way of like actually going for Sansa, or, you know, like actually doing something that a stupid drunk fool would do. No, he's like he does keep his mind like the whole time. Uh, which is, mm. uh, he's, I don't know, Peter Dinklage here, man, he just, he just owns this episode. And it is kind of crazy that I am going with Liam Cunningham here, actually, you know, that I, I love Peter Dinklage so much on this rewatch, and I've just been speaking nothing of him, and then I'm I'm giving, you know, Liam Cunningham just this little itty-bitty scene. No, yeah, um, this is... This is one of Peter Dinklage's better episodes, actually, for me. Um, I did I did go with him, and it's for the drunken scene later on <laughs> that I really, really got uh, got mm. the most out of him. But in the meantime, my next the next scene is my favorite scene of the episode. Uh, prior to the wedding, Marjorie Terrell tries to ingratiate herself mm. to Cersei, uh. and uh, commenting that they will technically be sisters soon. They should act as such, and. Cersei responds by telling Marjorie, you know, have you have you heard the story of the reigns of Castamere? Yeah. Also nice little foreshadowing for next episode. Yeah. Um Oh sister, you say. Let me tell you a quick little story of how the second largest house in mm-hmm. Westeros got wiped off the map completely. Yeah. Um, well, and what's what's crazy is that this story I thought seemed to be implied to have happened generations ago and then she finishes the story by t- saying tywin hung their yeah. bodies above they the rebelled castle. against my father and mm-hmm. he hung like she saw this happen like yeah and that made like i yeah i did not realize that either i thought that this was an ancient lannister story that just right. built their legacy up no this was tywin and like cersei was around her this made it even more like holy shit well and like, it made the threat more real because yeah. marjorie's like I remember that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like Whoa, it's... Oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah, oh, like, it's yeah. not like it's just, oh, it's this like, happened within Cersei's lifetime. It happened within the last 30 years. You know, I know Marjorie's not 30 or anything, but that's her saying she remembers it, it implies it to have happened relatively recently. Um, oh, man. Yeah, I didn't realize that. That, yeah, she would have... Because you're right, because she's like, um, and where is... 
uh, house what or house rain 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 yeah, yeah just house gone. rain now and she's like yeah yeah they are gone yeah that's you're right like but man yeah I I don't know I I guess I didn't pick up on that previous watches that it happened no I didn't either I don't know why I, but like but, this is not something new for the Lannisters wiping out houses um but the idea that uh you know whenever the conversation concludes and the whole time Cersei's been like veiled, you know, she's like, it's like obviously a threat, but she's not directly going, we're going to wipe out your family. If you step to us, you know, mm. but then to conclude this, conclude it with call me your sister again, and I will have you strangled in your sleep. <laughs> that's a, that's a direct threat. That's a, yeah, fuck you. Um, and, and I, I was, was very close to going with Lena Hetty again. That's but, what I was going to say. She yeah. almost got like, she, plays the role so well this episode crazy like, the whole time um and i love like the imagery of like she has that like neck armor on you know like just like i don't know just so that she doesn't get sl- i don't know like assassinated you know like, i don't know it's just pointless armor they're in the sept they're at a wedding you know like and there's no need you know but it's like literal armor around her neck and then you have like uh marjorie that's just like all flaunting you know everything all out and it's like all open everything and um, just showing like the difference of of their characters, because man, does does Cersei just become like a bully now? Like, um, like she's like, if I'm sad, everyone else is gonna be sad now. You know, it's like, um, I guess I don't know. I don't, I don't. Maybe we'll get there. Um, but like, I just her. I don't know. She just she is Cersei, and every, every oh, line that she says, like, every facial, like, she smile, like, she's smiling during the, like, while she's telling the story, like, my father hung them up on the castle walls, you know, like, she's, she's like, and we slaughtered them all, every man, woman, and child, you know, and she's smiling at that, and it's just, like, evil, like, just, I don't know, pure evil, but love to watch it on TV, um, and Lena Headey just, just dominates that. Um, but yeah, I don't know, kind of just taken back at, at my Liam Cunningham performance not here, but I don't know, I guess that's it just, I like the, the short and sweet scenes, I guess. Um, and he, yeah, no, me too. I'm sorry about my mic. I can't fix it. I don't know. Don't know what I need to do. I need to get new equipment. Um, but nevertheless, that's what I've been trying to do for the last two and a half minutes. Sorry about that. But regardless, uh, yeah, that was an incredible Incredible scene. That's what I ended up going with. Um, I was very close to going with Lena Hetty until the scene that follows, um, in which you know Peter Dinklage is just too fucking good. But uh, the ceremony is not a fun affair. Uh, Joffrey smuggle uh, smugly escorts Sansa to the altar in place of her father. Uh, that's painful. The idea that the man who assassinated her father would walk her down the aisle in place of her father, uh, petulantly removes the stool upon which Tyrion was to stand for the cloaking of Sansa and Lannister colors as part of the ceremony, and uh, giggles as the congregation continues. Mm. Um, And so does a lot of people in the crowd. Uh, I don't know, but it was... Was the, like, the families were kind of separated. Or, like, I don't know. They were, like, because one side was laughing, it seemed. And then, like, the Lannister side, or the side that, like, you know, Joffrey and and Tywin were on. Like, one guy started to laugh, and then, like, that's when Tywin looked back and was, like, you know, like, I know it's funny, you know, and everything. But he's, like, out of respect, like, still shut up. Um, Yeah, like, that is my my blood, you know. And then you still just see Joffrey just, you know, laughing like a little kid. You know, like, it's it's insane that, like... such a petulant little child, dude. That's the king right there, you know? Like, uh, I don't know. It's just... Yeah, and the only reason... He can give in to every instinct he's ever had because he's the king. That's the king. Like, that is the guy who is ruling the seven kings you know it's it is it is tywin you know for real he's actually doing all the work but this guy's just given the title and can do whatever the fuck he wants because he's not even the king's son actually um <laughs> so man nope uh, just uh happened to be in the right place at the right time little but, piece of shit i hate this little fuck but god it's so awkward like 
And how did Sansa not know to, like, kneel down, you know? I don't know. Like, why did she make, like, was she kind of, I don't know. Maybe she's just so nervous and, like, you know, she's just. I, I don't think. Know, I, I don't it's think not her to blame. But, like. I think she's also, you know, she's a stupid little girl <laughs> with stupid ideas and stupid, stupid dreams. dreams. Oh, Sansa. Uh, no, yeah, she's a. This is not how she thought her wedding would go, you know. No, obviously. So she, I, that's the thing is that she did what I think she knows is what's normal for a wedding ceremony. Just didn't think that Tyrion wouldn't be able to reach her. Like that's a, and this was one of those scenes where it like really, really stood out how much shorter Tyrion actually is than every other character. Oh yeah. Um, I was kind of like, oh my goodness, like I just like. Peter Dinklage demands such screen presence and such mm. he's he's a he's a big actor, you know, like he is so good at acting that he demands the screen at all, to, all at all times that like I don't know, he just mm. like whenever Sansa kneeled down and was You're then right. the same height as yeah. him, I was like, "Oh my goodness." Like Maybe it is like just the how often they frame him, you know, on mm. the same level as other people, you know, or often above other people. Like I remember whenever like early, like last season, it, it was always like always above someone or always yeah. below, you know, like always framed at below. But like, I don't know. He's always like his head level. He's either on a chair or like, you know, he's not really standing next to someone often. Right. Um, but yeah, you're right. Like there was a, I don't know. Like you no, did no, really like notice it during this scene one. Yeah. was to yeah. make him feel small yeah. and they did like an incredible job at yeah. making him feel small like not just not just physically but like literally like he this was part of the reason even before he got to the old uh mm. the whole drunken scene that he got the performance from me the way he like looks around mm. and it's like i i don't like yeah this is an embarrassment and a a sorrow within this guy that I don't think you can get out of a lot of actors. This is just a, it felt, it felt like a really personal performance and Peter Dinklage did a really, really good job with it. But, uh, yeah, I'm making the executive switch. Uh, yeah. I'll give the scene to Stannis visiting, uh, Davos, but Peter Dinklage has to get the performance. He's too fucking it's, good in this. Yeah. One, it, Cause I was like, it, he just, he didn't just act drunk the whole time you know that's not all he did he was also funny like actually like there was there was it was sad funny though you know like it was a lot of him just making fun of himself or like uh a lot of just or the situation uh but like he was funny he but also like stoic in his like in his decision making and knew that he was he was not going to bed sansa you know he's like and then like he he like actually here like I don't know. It, when it gets closer and closer to that reality, he's like, I know I'm not going to, you know, like, I, I already know I'm not going to do this. Like, right. um, and I think that was the point of him getting so drunk is that he wanted to be so drunk that he couldn't perform. That's like the whole point and mm. that he would just pass out and hopefully, you know, that it wouldn't happen. Um, or well, that he would... really interesting balance, uh, in the performance here where I think it could go either way. Like, mm. I think there's that hope that like I'll get so drunk I won't be able to perform I will pass out and that'll be that. He also wants to be drunk enough that if it does happen he doesn't remember it. He forgets it. Yeah. yeah. And then it's gone. Oh, Cuz that's yeah. the thing is that like there is a moment here where he's he's considering yeah. doing his duty. You know, it's not I don't think it's out of and like he does say I could, I won't though. You know, not until you want me to. And that's not like he's certainly not not interested, but he's like, it is my duty now as your husband and as mm. the heir to the Lannister name. It's something I'm supposed to do. It's something that like I would do, but goddamn, I can't do it to you. You know, like I can't do that. Um, yeah, I don't know. And the like the shot of him like being behind that like divider, like kind of look at I don't know confessional booth looking. You know, like you could don't like. I don't know what to call it, but it's like a weave, like kind of like a basket weave. Um, but like you see his face through it and he's like looking at her undress, mm. you know, and he's like, and then he's like just thinking about it. He's like pacing back and forth and he's like just going, yeah. But I think uh, like he knew it was wrong the whole time. And he didn't want to, but you're right. He was kind of like contemplating it as like his duty, you know, and like if he, if he actually like just should. Um, but no, I th like, and she says that she's 14 in the books. She's 12 at this time, I think, mm. like, I think, which is just, I mean, it's, it's not, 
It doesn't really make you know. It's still no, just no. It's horrid. like all bad, but there um, is a level of worse. Like, whenever, oh my lord! Like it's just, yeah, um, yeah. It's bad. It's real bad. It's real bad out here. But all the while, uh, mm. Tyrion spends the wedding feast mostly by getting deeply drunk and making light <laughs> of his father's insistence that his uh, inebriated state will render him unfit to impregnate his new wife. And Tyrion drunkenly proclaims that he is the god of tits and wine. Reminds his father uh, that Tywin has long called him a drunken little lust-filled beast. Mm. So doing his duty in the marriage bed will not pose a problem. Mm. I was gonna go with that line uh, mm. for because I mean it's a it's a it's an it's a famous Tyrion line. You know, come on, it's on like all the mugs everywhere. Um, you know that you see on Amazon. It's all like the I don't know Tyrion quotes that you see. Um, but uh, I think. It was because I wasn't going to go with him for the performance nod, and I wanted to give him a line so I could also say that. Um, but no, I, I will go with a, another line from this scene, but not from Tyrion. Um, but, I mean, I had to, had to recognize the tits and wine. Um, and the way he said yeah. it, too. I am, he kind of sang it, you know? He's like, I am the god of tits and wine. You know, like, yeah. and, like he was just so drunk. I don't know, he kind of sang it, and he's like... Yeah, the next time I go to a brothel, I shall build a, th a shrine in my honor, you know, and, and you have right. to have Charles dance there, you know, Tywin being like, all right, Tyrion, I I, I don't want to say this any more than I have to, you know, you're already making me uncomfortable, like, god damn it, dude, just right. just, just come on, just be able to perform, and let's, right. let me sit back down, you know, I, um... <laughs> No, it's pretty incredible. Pretty incredible scene. But uh, all at the same time, Joffrey is himself drinking too much wine and losing what few inhibitions he has. And his behavior becomes increasingly offensive uh, as he says that he might pay her a visit tonight after Tyrion passes out. And wouldn't matter if she wanted him to or not. Her men would hold her. His men would hold her down. I was like, wow, Joffrey yeah. is, he was Doesn't already the Lannister. worst little yeah. piece of like, shit. Wow. Yeah, like, I forgot this was in there. But, like, yeah, you well, also have, like, the mountain and, and the one fucking... Yeah, Sir Marin of, Trant. Yeah, him just standing in the background. It's like, oh, yeah. I I don't know how that dude dies. Still, I don't remember. Um, or, good. I don't know. I, I want him That's to die one. so bad. Um because I remember how Joffrey dies clearly, you know oh, that, yeah, that's yeah. clear, and that's I remember that. But it's and like, the mountain, that's just all these one. people that that need to die, and this this just yeah up Joffrey up up even more, you know it's uh, yeah like, that's what's crazy is like I remember him being a little fucking sadist who wants to hurt people, but I forgot that he was also a, he becomes a sexual deviant like he is yeah. like bad. Like, he's a, yeah. ter a terrible person in every single regard. There is there is nothing redeeming about any fiber of his being. That man nope. is the worst on every front. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, no, terrible. Or and, that boy, he's a fucking child. But uh, it, and even whenever he gets up to do all this joking and stuff, you know, Cersei tries to be like, "Well, how about hey, you just buddy. go talk to you know your your soon to be wife?" You know. Um, I have a lifetime for that. You know, he says, it's like, oh my God, like every line you're saying, you know, you, you probably just heard from Robert, you know, say some, you know, or, or some just asshole say before, you know, and he's like, finally, I have the, the chance to say this, you know, and be, be that guy, you know, he's like, ah, and Cersei just like leaves, you know, she's like, fuck this. I don't know. Like, I, yeah. I think like, which was kind of funny and like tells her handmaiden to even stay, you know, she's like, just, okay, whatever, you know. Um, I'm out of here, but yeah, man, man, yeah, Joffrey decides it's time for some more fun. It's time for the bedding ceremony, which involves the men, uh, stripping the bride and the women stripping the groom before carrying them off to the marriage bed. He turns to the women and says, tend to my, tend to my uncle. He is not very heavy. And, uh, Tyrion angrily insists that there will be no bedding ceremony. When Joffrey keeps pushing the matter, matter, a furious Tyrion slams a dagger into the table and threatens to Joffrey that he will be fucking his own bride with a wooden cock. And Hell uh, yeah. everyone stands in silence for a moment, and Joffrey goes, what did you say? And after mm -hmm. a tense moment, Tywin goes, he is very clearly drunk. There will be no bedding ceremony. Everything will be fine. 
forget about <laughs> it. And uh, taking the hint, Tyrion goes, ah, yeah, man, I was just fucking kidding, you know? A bad joke. Joffrey, bad joke. Bad. In fact, you know, I'm a terrible person. I am a, I'm, I'm a joke in and of myself, you know? I'm going to go fuck my wife. See you guys later. Come on, Sansa, let's go. And then just have you heard the... The t- I once threw up on a girl in the act. Let me tell you oh, all about God. it. Get you right in the mood. You know, I think like feel, like feel like honesty is the best policy between a husband and wife. Yeah, like ah. Uh, but before they leave, Elena Tyrell delivers my line for the episode that I'll have mm. to give. Um, and it's just her going through all the family the relations. relations that would happen um, after these marriages. And she one says, thing is for sure. <laughs> Yeah, your brother uh, will be your father-in-law. Yeah, and and then Loris is like, "All right, I've had enough from that point." You know, he's like, "Fuck that!" But like all the thinking that you have to do, like she's so quick with it, and like she says it so quickly that you don't really think about it. But then if you dissect the line, it's like actually nuts. Like when you think, like when you marry the king, Joffrey's mother will become his sister-in-law. So she's saying, talking to to Marjorie. You know, when you marry the king, when Marjorie marries Joffrey, Cersei will become Joffrey's sister-in-law. So his mom is now his sister-in-law. And then their baby would be Loris's nephew, grandson? I'm not sure, she says. <laughs> it's both, but, you know, who knows which one to call it. But your brother will become your father-in-law. That much is beyond dispute. You know, it's just like... So much back and forth there. It's like, oh my god, the incest, the, and like, but also, it's not just the, in, there's also like an incest layer, and then just like the marriage layer, yeah. but you know, I don't know, there's so many layers going on there, and Olena is just like, she's just speeding through it, and like, Loris is like, oh fuck, yeah, this, this, oh god, this is just terrible, and then like, finally that last straw, and he's like, Fuck this! Yeah, no, I'm. Well, I'm we get out that of... little. We get that little bit between Loris and Cersei as well, which was another reason I almost went with Lena Headey because she was just dropping bars left and right here. Uh, Loris goes over there to try and comfort her to a degree. You know, my father once told me nobody cares. Nobody cares. She she was so ready for that. She knew she was going to say nobody cares instantly, and she just had to had to finish it with yeah whatever whatever he was, he was going to say. Like she knew before he even came over there that that's what she was going to say and like she smiled as she walked out you know too she was yeah. like ah like like ah man i like she's so good at surfing. she's really good um, she's really good but uh after this once they are alone in their quarters a uh, tense moment passes as sansa nervously and slowly undresses and Tyrion ultimately tells her to stop deciding mm-hmm. that he will not consummate the marriage if she does not want to and only will if she changes her mind and sansa questions you know, what if I never change my mind? And Tyrion jokes, an- another contender for my favorite line. And so my watch begins. Dang, uh, man. He knows. I mean, I think that's the the real reason he was, like, getting just drunk. Is that he knows, he's like, I know this is my, you know, I don't want to do this. It's only out of duty that I even will. I probably won't in the first place. It's never going to happen I'm going to the, this is my only escape, my only escape now to escape my father, all my titles, everything is the wall, you know, and I think that's maybe why they, they had him go there at first, you know, and like at the beginning of the show, um, and travel north, piss off the wall and like, have it be like, you know, I'm just visiting because I can, and I'm Tyrion Lannister, and I can piss off the wall because I wanted to, but now it's like, this might actually be my life now, my only option that I have, um. But yeah, uh, I don't know. He just and that, does he pass out right after that? Does he say that and then that's when he passes out? Yeah, he or, just goes right yeah, over just... and falls asleep. Yeah. Uh, pretty pretty hilarious. But then the following morning, Shay notices with a hint of a smile that Sansa's bed sheets are not stained, and mm. therein they did not consummate the marriage, which makes Shay quite happy. But that brings us to the last location here beyond the wall where Samwell and Gilly continue on their journey to Castle Black, taking refuge in a destroyed cabin next to a heart tree. And before they enter, two crows land on a branch on the heart tree and begin to squawk loudly. And later at night, Sam tries to light a fire, but is frustrated in his attempts, and Gilly tries and does it quite easily. Meanwhile, Sam suggests Gilly name her son, but she doesn't know any boy names. She's never met boys. 
uh, sad. Like the only boy name she threw up was Craster, Craster. and he's like, it had Sam no. had to be like, oh maybe not, you know? <laughs> like I think Gilly was probably like, I don't know. I think it's just that's just her reality, you know. That's just yeah. All... She doesn't know any fucking guys. Yeah, it's not that she wanted to name you know her son after. Braster, you know, it's just that's the only guy named she knew. But like, it's funny how Sam had to be like, probably nah, not. I don't know about that one. Um, <laughs> yeah, Sam. But, Sam lists off some examples and explains the difference between a first and last name. And you know, he na- rattles off the men in his family, and Gilly likes the name Randall. And Sam's like, "Please don't do that. Mm-mm, That'd be not. bad. I'd yeah. hate that." Throws um, up John before that, though. You know, like, mm-hmm. a, I think the third name he says throws up, like, some other names. But he's like, John? That's a good, you know, good name. Yeah. But, yeah, he's like, no. Yeah, not my dad. No. Um, don't do that. But, yeah, th- I don't know. This moment between the two of them was actually, like, they're starting to actually talk to each other now. And, like, now Gilly is maybe not fully interested in Sam, but at least is, like, not, like, worried about the survival of her son and like that's all you know that's all she could focus on is like i just need to get my baby out of here you know and like we're about to die now they can actually like slow down actually talk to each other and she's like oh did, was your father you know like abusive or, or bad destructive yeah. like like mine was um and he's like yeah in a, a different kind of way you know and like doesn't doesn't give her the whole story or anything but but she's like, oh, I don't know. They start to understand each other more here. They do indeed. I, they do yeah. indeed. It's a good scene. And their relationship mm-hmm. is easily, I mean, it's the longest running in Game of Thrones. Um, and it ends the happiest. But uh, regardless, uh, suddenly. actually get named? Do you, do you remember? Oh, yeah, I remember. Is it John? No, it's Sam. It is Sam? Oh, yeah, that's it, even. Oh, okay. Yeah, she names, she names him that's after right. Samwell. Uh, okay, cause that's I right. think I can't remember if she dubs him the baby's father at the same time because I feel like I remember her saying I want to name him after her after his father and then says like Samwell, which would be like uh, which is like a really cute moment. But like I can't remember if that's exactly how it happens or if it's another way. But regardless, okay. that is right. uh, yeah, the baby's name is is Samwell. Um, and, you know, suddenly they are interrupted by thunderous squawking of crows and Sam's like, mm. Okay, you stay here. I'm gonna go check on that. He's got like the fake smile on his face, yeah. and he's like, "Be right back." Even Gilly's uh, like, "Don't leave." Like, no, like, act, don't, don't leave. Do you know, she's like, she's like, one, like, I don't think it's a good idea for you, but also, like, I don't, don't leave me here. You know, yeah, like, exactly. don't leave me alone. Um, but I, I kind of wanted to. Is this just Bran checking in? You know, or or is it the current Three Eyed Raven? Like, what, like, what's the point of the crows here? Um. Like, this is a monumentous moment that is happening here. You know, like, check, like, what's about to happen. Like, a mm. a white being killed with dragon glass here. Um, so, it like, I guess John did it, but with a Valyrian steel sword, like, sword. Right. But this is the first walker to be killed with dragon glass, I guess. And This is her. the first walker to be killed by... Guess... This is the first white walker to be killed, not the first white. Because John, John burnt a white alive, or dead, I guess. But he has not killed one with a sword yet. Oh, his sword just destroyed... Well, he shattered. He shattered someone, right? Or no, that happens... Oh, I'm dumb. That, that has not happened yet. Seasons. What the fuck am I thinking of? Yeah, no. Yeah, that I'm just like, that's a couple yet. seasons away. Hello. Um, yeah, okay, what am, I, what am I thinking of? Yeah, no, he just burnt. Okay, no, he just burnt. Yeah, he uh, just burnt one. Just, he uh, threw, and it wasn't a white zombie. walker. Yeah, just, it was yeah, one it was, of his little okay, the white right. minions. But uh, so, is this like? That's interesting. This, I hadn't considered witness? that this was like a warning, like to let Sam know that a white walker was coming. Okay, that could be interesting. Um, mm-hmm. I Did... I just considered it to be like an omen, and that the crows gather kind of where a white walker is coming to like it's it's more there to scare the shit out of them than it is to that's what i I was thinking it's either bran or the three-eyed raven like checking in you know to either warn sam or like just watch this happen you know like because he needs to know that dragon glass can kill a white i don't know something like that but but then also all that requires is one raven yeah and like why is it all of them i think it's more the white is controlling these ravens 
to tell him where Sam is. Like, mm. he all of them on that tree, just a loud, like, beacon, you know, like, literally, like, follow the noise of all these ravens, they're right there, you know, sort mm. of thing. And then, I don't know, uh, I was thinking it could be, the, you know, could be that, that it's just, like, he's warging all those fucking ravens are just, ah, just being loud. But, like, I feel like, I feel like there is some connection to the Three-Eyed Raven or Bran here. I feel like that, I don't know, I feel like that it's not just the white or not, I, I feel like it is, like, maybe a warning to Sam or, like, um, because he, like, Sam is on the council at the end, you know, like, he makes it all the way through, needs to stay alive is very important. Um, and this could be a moment where he dies if he doesn't know that the White Walker's coming up, you know, to, or the White's coming up to, to get the baby. Mm. Um, but I don't know, I guess, was there, um, when C- Craster would give this, like, just put the sun down, was it just in the middle of the woods? There wasn't, like, a, a, uh, a weird... It wasn't, like, an altar or anything. Yeah, it was like... just, like, there was no, okay, yeah, and there was, there were no crows there that then, it was just, the White just walked up, took the baby, walked away. Yeah, like, it wasn't, that yeah. is, that is interesting, I've never really considered what this was, I've always thought, thought of it just to be a filmmaking choice to build tension, um, like, there's something bad coming. We mm-hmm. know there's something bad coming. Um, but I've never thought about the in universe explanation for what it would mean for a bunch of crows to be there. Mm. Um, yeah, I could, I could see any of those possibilities. You know, I've always just, uh, I've always just assumed it's the crows show up because they know something bad's about to happen. Like, mm. that's just. There's always this. It did make it way more scary. That's for sure. Like, yeah, that, that is like, whether, whatever it is for storytelling. Well, and then when they run away, the raven, they chase them. They like follow Sam Hilly. That's right. Hmm. Which I don't know what that means. Interesting. Uh, when, after he, you know, actually stabs him, and I'm like, oh, dude, why didn't you pick up the fucking thing yeah. that you just killed him with for one he has like a bunch of other, like that's he had like a bunch of other ones but in the books it's there's a there is an altercation they have before where i think like um or it happens differently there's someone else there when this happens and they they stab the white and then it, it shatters but then the the dragon glass is so cold to the touch that they can't pick it up like it's frozen to the cold like it's just frozen so they can't like just pick it up right right after it's that they have to like wait a little bit um and then they can pick it up and go um so at this point sam already knew that whenever he ki- you know like i so it right. this it happened differently than in the books i'm pretty sure that's um, interesting so that that's, that's why he just runs and he knows and also he's just fucking scared you know yeah. he's like i'm just grabbing i don't just know where just happened. Was gilly he grabbed gilly yeah. and they bolted you know like yeah, I, it seems I like, like it. he's dead i don't know he could have just gone on the ground he's gonna pop up somewhere else you know that like who knows he's they're made of ice i don't fucking know what's no, happening what here. we just gotta on, go you know no yeah um, no yeah no it was a it was a good fucking episode and that's how it concluded <laughs> but uh yeah i think we went through all our favorites is it time for a rating i think it is now yeah and i this was an interesting, I guess, an interesting one to to think about rating wise because it nothing like huge happened. It was just another episode of Thrones that was just a delight to watch. That was little check ins everywhere. Um, but I I don't know. Like last episode, we gave a nine enjoyment, and I don't I don't know if I'm am I there or am I like maybe a little below. I'm th- I'm, I'm thinking for enjoyment this episode, uh, just a little know. lower. You know, I thought like, it was just a little. I mean, it wasn't boring obviously but it wasn't up to the excitement levels that previous episodes have been you know um the lowest this season is an 875 and that's episode i don't think it can go three. lower than that um, um so like yeah and last episode we gave a nine so i'm like i don't like i'm right there i'm either like eight seven five or nine like that yeah. i don't it goes you know lower than i don't know or maybe like is it the worst of the season i don't know no i think it's an eight seven five i think it's yeah. fair okay okay than I, I agree with that then because that, that's where my gut took me. Is that a little bit lower than last episode? Um, but yeah, not not far less than than any other of the season. Uh, I don't know genre wise. Yeah, I mean we're firing on all cylinders here. Uh, trying to, like that's the thing is it's they have just so many storylines going on at once. Uh, this this might be the episode. I don't know. Is is this 
Possibly not. A, I don't know. Like I'm trying to think. We have a lot of political intrigue. Yeah, we what have, would? Uh, yeah, the marriage. We have a marriage. A marriage. Or, we yeah. have a murdering of a White Walker. White Walker um, that actually happened at the Crows. We just talked about what the fuck that was. Who even knows yeah, what the fuck like, that was? I mean, uh, Daenerys. Yeah, if the, it's not a ten, it's a nine seven five. Like it's yeah. like it's right yeah, there. I think, yeah, we can just keep it. I, I'm just trying to like just. I'm pretty sure it just will remain constant throughout yeah, the rest from, of the show pretty much. Yeah. Um, but I'm just trying to like take a step back and re- like just not take it for, you know, just take it as a 10 right away, but I'm it probably just will remain that. Oh, way. and I appreciate your efforts here, but like yeah. uh we've reached that point in the show where like I said at the at the top of the episode, it's it's another episode of Game of Thrones and it's Yeah. <laughs> It's just it's just that good, man. It just keeps being as good as it possibly okay. can be, and it's. I think I think it's a ten in the genre, just because yeah. like, we've given episodes without some of the fantastical Fancy, elements yeah. tens. And just like, for the yeah, just the politics alone. Yeah. sometimes was like yeah. I mean, like Blackwater. I guess that had like wildfire, but that was really just like a war. That was just yeah, politics just war, and just war battle. battle. That you yeah. know enough. Um, there but i don't know um i think i'm still there i just wanted to just take a stop your reality yeah check, just, just a little just a little quick in. make sure um yeah. what's uh what's our critical ratings you know what are what what have been some of the best ones this season or one of the some of the worst ones this season uh eight is the lowest of the season that was episode three walk of punishment um and then the next lowest looks like it jumps up to a nine and that's episodes one and two um, but then everything else has been nine two five or nine five for the last four episodes. Um, so I think I go eight five is kind of where my gut took me. Not not super high as far as like I don't I don't think it's a nine necessarily. I don't think it stuck out visually very much mm-hmm. in, in my opinion. I thought it was a uh, there were some good looking shots, but uh, there have been more cohesive episodes. I thought that the uh, the score didn't stand out the way I usually like the score to stand out. Um, mm-hmm. I thought the writing was good, but it uh, wasn't yeah. anything job dropping. Right. You know, the only time I really noticed the score was uh, the Stannis and Davos scene. Um, whenever Davos was given his whole like spiel and like, no, you can't do this, but then Stannis then clap back with no you when you see the things and he was like no the lord of light it went into the like that theme you know it switched during that moment and was like ah now i'm on my stannis you know or i don't know that little switch in the music but yeah Yeah. you're right there was there was no like i guess maybe like the subtle reins of casimir in the background uh whenever cersei's talking with with marjorie there but like i don't know i think this this episode is is really just like setting up the net you know the next like getting aria like speaking of a wedding we we see a wedding you know we're getting comfortable with weddings just happening you know we're, it's just setting us up for the idea of i don't know um getting comfortable with weddings and then to just completely uh do what they do to us next episode um but yeah i think i think eight five is fair there um actually and, and if we do go there it, it rounds it out to a 908 which is is now the second lowest episode of the season. Yeah, um, I mean, episode three. It's pretty much tied with episode three. Episode three is an eight nine two, and this is a nine oh, almost a nine one actually. So a little bit above, actually, yeah. episode three. Um, but yeah, still, I mean, like I, I would a say nine. it was one of the weaker of the seasons. Yeah. But that's not that. Not to say it was bad. It was just. Mm-hmm. This season's been so fucking good, which I didn't remember. You know, season three is like, wow, this season has been strong. Uh, yeah, to say that one of the worst episodes of the season is at 91%, um, you know, yeah. overall, um, I think you're doing pretty good. Um, <laughs> because, yeah, even last like last season, we had a, a 77%, um, 80, 86, um, 85 um and then yeah, so uh, but this season's been nothing but nines. Only only one dipped in into the eights, and it's an eight nine. Um, yeah, so it's, uh, it's pretty solid, pretty solid yeah. run there. Uh, uh, but yeah, with that, I think we will conclude this episode of Winter is Blooming. Then I don't. Uh, maybe we just stop here. It was a good run, and and you know, because mm-hmm. I just maybe we just don't get to next week. 
Uh, maybe maybe yeah. we don't we don't watch next step. Maybe we just go to episode ten. Maybe actually yeah, we know what um, happens. We, yeah, it's know. it's tens across the board. Uh, it's a great episode. Nothing bad happens at all. We can just go on to episode ten, right? And and, <laughs> and move on. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, next week's gonna be rough, but it's it's necessary. We knew we knew happen. these things were happening. We knew these <laughs> things were happening. Uh, we are emotionally and mentally prepared for mm. what's to come. Uh, mm but there's no telling how we might handle it. Uh, but yeah, we'll be back next week for Reigns of Castamere. It's going to be a goodie. But uh, in the meantime, on Wednesday, we are continuing the Ahsokast, a Star mm-hmm. Wars podcast where we are taking a journey through Ahsoka Tano's uh, story as a character. All the pivotal moments, and this week, I believe, is the Mortis arc uh, when her, Anakin, and Obi-Wan head to Mortis accidentally very fun one uh, and then friday we continue our comic book movie journey through film with hulk 2003 which was a really fun one to talk about that's going to be a good one and uh we got a lot of good stuff coming this week uh so be sure to check that out head to patreon.com slash penny bloom pod where you'll find over 50 hours of exclusive content and i'm getting back into writing i've been doing some written reviews lately and it's been a lot of fun so you're going to have to check those out for $3 a month. You can support this podcast financially, which is a huge help because it costs me money and I don't make any off of it unless it's over there at patreon.com slash penny bloom pod. Head to Twitter, follow at penny bloom pod and follow on Instagram at penny bloom podcast. Remember to leave a five star rate and review wherever it is that you might be listening. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think that's it. I was Colton Robertson. I was joined by Joseph George. Thank you very much, homie. Oh, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to be here. Oh, and it's always a pleasure to have you. And remember, peace, love, and bloom. And I am the god of tits and wine.